Kia ora fellow runners, it's Coach Brad here, physiotherapist and running coach. And I've got a confession to make. I want to share a personal story with you all. A story about resilience, self-care and the importance of listening to your body. But most of all, it's a story about being pig-headed and just plain stupid. Since the middle of last year, I've been battling with a persistent pain in my foot that just wouldn't go away. Now like many of us, I tried to tough it out and kept pushing through the discomfort at the start of my runs and then kidding myself because the foot seemed to calm down so I thought hey it's getting better. So I thought I could continue to train thinking I could manage the issue with decreasing my runs to maybe three times a week and doing lots of yoga, foam rolling, ball rolling on the foot and icing. But you know what, thinking that I could manage it through this I couldn't have been more wrong. Looking back, I now realise that I should have heeded the warning signs and taken action much sooner. Look, I deluded myself because, look, let's face it, I love running. I'm sure you do too. I was in the middle of a cross-country season. I was fit and doing really well with all my races. I was running really well against my training buddies. I ignored the warning signs, those, those flags, the sharp heel pains and the stiffness in the mornings, the lingering discomfort. It got worse after runs. I mistakenly believed that I could push through, manage it, and take a break later. But in reality, I was only setting myself up for more significant setbacks. At the end of the cross-country season, I attempted to start some track training that really sparked the foot up. So in my incredible wisdom, I chose to rest for three weeks and then compete in a 10-kilometer local road race, the city to surf. All of my mates were doing it, And look, I just didn't really want to miss out. Three weeks would be enough rest, right? Wrong. As a physiotherapist and a running coach, you'd think I knew better. The crazy thing is I did deep down. I just ignored that feeling. I buried it and plowed ahead with my ridiculous plan that allowed me to keep running. I made the tough decision to press pause on my running routine for the next four months. It was a humbling moment for me, but I knew it was crucial for my recovery and long-term well-being. In the end, like I really had no choice. I had run myself to a standstill, could hardly wait beer in the mornings and if I tried to run, the foot was painful the entire time, it it never settled. During this period of rest and rehabilitation I focused on cross-training with rowing, the elliptical trainer, the curved treadmill with resisted walking in the gym, strength and core and flexibility with yoga to help maintain my cardiovascular fitness and mobility. I had to be smart about supporting my foot's healing process by not stuffing up the environment for healing. I was much more committed to coming back stronger and more mindful of my body's needs. So as I lace up my running shoes once again, I do so with a newfound appreciation for the gift of movement and a deep understanding of the importance of self-care. Just remember, our bodies are our most valuable assets. So let's treat them with respect and the care that they deserve. So thanks for sharing this journey, this humbling journey with me. Stay tuned for more running and wellness tips and insights. And always remember, taking care of yourself is the first step to achieving your running goals and making your running experience positive and consistent one. Here's some more info on dealing with plantar fasciitis with a little bit more, bit more detail. But please stay smart, strong, champion compassion, and I'll catch you on the next one.